deer hair. Spinning, stacking, and a hybrid of both of those? I have a special guest that's going to walk you through that last one. And he has way better hair than I do. So Montana Fly Company came through big time in the swag department for Patreon. Check this out. <laughs> that was so cool. So do me a favor and go show Montana Fly Company some love because yeah. For the longest time, you guys have watched me battle deer hair. Over the last year, I've, I've come to embrace the love of deer hair. It's a lot of fun to work with, and with a few little tips, it's not near as hard as I was trying to make it be. I think that's probably most of it. People are trying to make it harder than it really is, and it's not. It's not that hard. So first of all, there's really two different kinds of hair. Body hair and belly hair. So when I think of body hair, I think of smaller flies and collars. Your stimulator wings, uh, elk hair caddis wings, stuff like that. As you can tell, this hair is very consistent. Um, it's, it's the same length, it's not jagged, it doesn't have cowlicks and it's not it, it's it's on a flat hide that is that it, it's on a flat hide that's very consistent now some of the drawbacks of this hair you're not going to find it in a ton of different colors each strand of hair is is thinner than like belly hair so that so that's what we're talking about it, it's not the super buoyant uh really big and round hair uh, like the belly hair but for wings on smaller dry flies and, and stuff like that this is great great stuff you can spin this you can stack it you can do whatever you want to do with this but it's it's probably not gonna throw as big of a head on a streamer as belly hair so if you're wanting a really thick head on a streamer or a big bass bug. This is probably not what you're looking for. Belly hair. Belly hair is the the gnarly stuff that everybody knows. It comes on a hard hide and usually it's funky shaped. I use belly hair more than I use any other kind of hair. Um, I, I use belly hair a lot. Belly hair comes in a ton of different colors. Belly hair is the thick, big, gnarly stuff that you look for. Uh, for like bass bugs, for big wedge heads on streamers, your bass bugs, your deer hair heads. This is the main stuff that you're looking for. So until I sat down to do this video and, and I, was, I was putting all this stuff together and I was taking my notes, I was, I was writing my notes I was really, and I think most everybody is really under the impression that there are two ways to work with deer hair. You stack it or you spin it. Not exactly. And we'll get there. <laughs> so the first thing I'm going to do is spin some hair. I've already cut it off the hide, I've already cleaned it out with the slicker brush, and I've already packed it. One of the things that I really battled in general with deer hair is I don't think I used enough. Like. I look at the really good guys like Andreas Anderson, Chris Helm, Pat Cohen, and tons of other guys, and they use a lot of hair. They use a lot of hair. So I use a, I'm going to use a bunch of hair. So I'm going to lay my deer hair about the halfway point. I'm going to take a loose wrap, keeping all the hair on top of the shank, and another loose wrap. Okay? At this point, as I let go with my left hand, I'm going to pull down and let it spin around the shank with my with my thread hand. So I'm going to slowly let go, let it spin, and work around the shank. 
So you saw the spinning, hence a spun deer hair. So stacking deer hair. So the whole idea of stacking here is we're going to force the hair to stay on whatever side of the hook that we want it to stay on. We're not going to let it spin around the hook. It, it's going to stay where we want it to stay. So again, we're going to use a bunch of hair. Just trust me on this. If you're looking for a tight head, you, you want to use more hair than what you really think you need to use on these bigger flies. So what we're going to do is go about half uh, to the halfway point of the hair. Again, we want all this to stay on top of the hook shank, except for that one. So I'm going to go one, two turns. So at this point I have no thread tension at all. And as I tighten it, I'm going to hang on with this hand and force everything to stay on top of the hook shank. So I'm lifting up with this hand as I pull down on the thread. So lift and pull. Okay, so now I have some thread tension. I want to grab uh, the underneath side and flare it and pull down and flare it. So forcing everything to stay on top of the hook. So once I get to this point, I will always figure, I will always find my way through this. And hit it again. And that's stacked deer hair. So for this hybrid technique of, of spinning and stacking um, at the same time, uh, so a couple years ago, I shot a Streamer Chronicles with a guy by the name of Andreas Anderson. You might have heard of him. He's a deer hair god. And my favorite wedge head streamer, diver streamer, is his unholy diver. I got to watch him tie that, just me and him. He got to the head and he did this technique where just all of a sudden, Boom, there's this big, huge, tight, gnarly head. And I had no clue how he did it. I, I, I was like, okay, wait, you gotta slow down. I have to see that. I've never seen anybody do that before. It was like he was a magician. I didn't know if I should throw holy water on him or if I should just like turn and run. <laughs> so while I was putting this video together, I thought, okay, there, there are the two main ways to to tie with deer hair. You spin it or you stack it. But then I thought, well, Andreas's technique is phenomenal. Might help somebody. So I called in a favor. Hi, Ryan. And uh, Ryan's viewers. I'm gonna show how, how I tie most of my uh, single color uh, heads, uh, whether it's a wedge head or if it any old head, kind of huge clump of hair. This is uh, hairline, just regular uh, deer belly hair, it's white tail belly. Cleaning out the under fur first, measuring how long I want my collar. And making sure I got plenty of hair in front of that color as well. Two loose wraps. And from here, most people would uh, just tighten the thread and let it spin. And a lot of people ask me how I spin hair. And uh, the answer is always, I never do it. Uh, what I do is this. Uh, I guess you could call it a hybrid technique between spinning and stacking. Stacking would be putting hair in one place and holding it there. Um, and by doing that, you can do uh, top and bottom colors, or you can even stack hair on top of each other. And uh, you've probably seen uh, Dolber divers tie that way by me or by Pat Cohen, Chris Helm, whoever. Uh, there's a lot of other good tires as well who does them. Uh, but that is 
a different technique as well. So this is, I guess, a third technique, or as I said, a hybrid. Um, so the hair is on top now. What I'm gonna do is just push it down and spread it around that hook shank, shank. And hold on to it as I would if I were stacking hair. But I'm gonna do the stacking 360, like all the way around the hook. You might have noticed that I've done, did quite a few wraps uh, going slightly forward with every wrap. So I'm getting uh, hook pressure on the hair over a spread out area. They're not all in, all in the same place. And that's going to help with uh, keeping the hair, uh, the head from uh, any risk of twisting, especially after a couple of fish has uh, been chewing on it. It's going to help you with durability. More hair. And you might notice that I'm using very big clumps of hair. But this technique actually allows me to to do just that and still get it, getting it to stick on the actual hook. So I'm cleaning out, I'm gonna cut the tips just because it makes it easier to work with. So next step, it's gonna be a little bit more crowded up here. So I'm gonna actually angle the, the hairs that way, pressing back a little bit, do one loose wrap, you kind of have to thread it around the, the hook shank. See it's angled downwards like that now. So I'm gonna give it a little bit of a press here to spread it around again. Grab a hold of the back hairs while pulling that way. If you pull straight down, all this hair will just fall off the hook. So that direction, going that way backwards. That's going to pull the hair into the other hair and make sure that the thread and the hair stays on the hook because you have basically no room at all. My thread hair is probably right on top of the hook eye right now, something like that. But if I pull backwards, it's going to stay on there and you're going to have a lot of hair on that hook. Somewhere in here, right there, somewhere is the hook eye. So I'm gonna find it by just using my index finger and pulling it back. Make sure I got the hook, uh, the th thread pressure back and do that one, two, even three wraps just to lock in that thread pressure. I got some room up here now uh, to do my finish. That's it. That's a lot of hair in a pretty small space. So that would be my unholy diver, but blind. So I'm going to put some eyes on that later. Bye, people. So trimming deer hair. This is where things can go downhill really quickly. <laughs> so in streamers. One of the big things is wedge heads. So for cutting a wedge head, we simply want the wedge to go up, right? Typically the bottom of the, the bottom of a head is gonna be pretty flat, so we're gonna start there. So we're gonna find the eye of the hook, and just above the eye of the hook, we're just gonna go straight back. We don't wanna saw, we don't wanna go sideways or anything like that, we just want the razor blade to do its job. <sighs> Flat first cut. Second cut, we're gonna go up. Find the eye of the hook and go up. So at this point, it's little trimming here and there. Razor scissors. So I like to cut off the, ma the vast majority of this bulk with some scissors. It just makes it easier. 
Okay, so you can see this shape starting to take now. <sighs> now you can, you can keep holding the razor blade like this, or you can turn it and hold it like this and start to trim and cut little stuff. I have figured out that holding it like this for me works better for me after my first two big initial cuts. So when I start to come in here and cut at different angles, it feels better for me to use it like this. So again, I've stacked this deer here. So I have one color on top, and I have one color on bottom. Kind of, it kind of tweaked on me. Just a, You get the point. And that's a wedge head for a streamer. Okay, so trimming deer hair bass bugs. Obviously I've got a an untrimmed bass bug here. Uh, nothing special, I just tied it real quick. The best tip I've ever gotten for trimming deer hair bugs is to use like a, a jig type of thing. I cut this out of like a Folgers lid, like the coffee lid. Put a little hole in it. It's roughly the same size that I want this body to be. So I'm gonna put this hole over the eye of the hook. And now I have something to go by to, to shape the rest of my body. I'm not going to be digging in and out, and I can stay on top of that, good to go. So by using this jig, I could build this shape super easy. Yeah. And there's a very rudimentary bass bun. So deer hair does take some getting used to. There are some little quirks about it that are not super easy. Because I'm, I'm by no means good at deer hair. But I feel like once I figured out a certain few things, that working with deer hair wasn't something that I dreaded. But now it's just like, Bring it on. I think we're done here. <laughs>